Hi, I'm Joseph Phillips. I'm the Director of Education at Instructing.com. I want to talk with you today about a concept that I use in my life. It's called micro goals. I'm a big goal person. I like to set goals. And when I get a goal done, I can take that off my list. It's a sense of accomplishment. I think goals help us to give something to work towards, to have a vision of what we want to achieve in the future, that desired future state. So I wanna to talk to you about, well, what is a micro goal? A micro goal is a small activity that you want to get done, like go to the gym or clear off your desk or a, a small project or a report or a paper that you have due. So a micro goal is anything that can be accomplished from about four hours to maybe a week. I like to keep mine smaller than that. I like to keep mine at one day, but really anything from four hours to uh, up to a week. So I like micro goals because they're small, they're easy to uh, get done, they're not so overwhelming. So in this presentation, I'm gonna walk through my approach to what are micro goals and then how do we implement those in our life? Well, as I mentioned, a micro goal is about four hours up to a week. It's very specific and we can measure progress in that goal. So it's all about a short-term focus. If you've taken any of my classes on instructing.com, you know that I'm an advocate for laser-like focus. Put away all distractions and give all of my attention to one task. Well, if I have a really big task, a really big project that's going to last for months and months, that, that can be really difficult to have that laser-like focus. So in another video, I talked about using the Pomodoro technique where you do work for 25 minutes, you take a five minute break, 25 minutes of work, a five minute break, and you do that four times, and then you take uh, 15 minutes to half an hour little break away from work. So it's a way of having that laser-like uninterrupted focus. Focus is so important because it gives our sustained energy to one specific task. It's amazing how much you can get done when you don't have the distractions, when you can actually focus on the work. So with micro goals, we want to use this laser-like focus, very specific. Well, in order to be very specific focus or have that laser-like focus, we have to know exactly what we're aiming to do in the goal. So that's why the idea that it has to have uh, specifics on how do we know when we're done, what are we trying to achieve, how do we know this is a micro goal, that it's not too big. So we want to make certain that we have broken this down into very small, specific items to accomplish. The benefits of a micro, a micro goal is we can take advantage of short focus times. I like that Pomodoro technique. And it gives motivation that I can knock out these little things and that feels good. It gives me motivation and it allows me to work towards a larger goal. So if we have a really big goal, like you want to write a book or you want to run a marathon or earn your PMP or your CAPM, that's a pretty big goal to just say, I'm going to run a marathon. Well, there are a lot of steps, no pun intended, there are a lot of steps to running a marathon. So there's all the training to get us to that point or writing a book. There's a lot of things that we have to do to write that book or report or whatever the case may be. So we take that large goal and we slice it down. We break it down into smaller achievable chunks of work. And then those small achievable chunks of work that are segments of the larger goal are, are micro goals. That's one example of a micro goal. It could also be something like clean out the garage or uh, clean out the closet or whatever the case may be, that it's a smaller activity that you need to take four hours or a day to accomplish. So it just gets rid of this overwhelming nature of really big goals. So micro goals are small pieces of work. The aggregate of those can lead to the accomplishment of a big goal in our lives. So to go about setting micro goals, if you don't know where to begin, look at SMART. SMART means it's specific, it's measurable, it's attainable, it's realistic and it's timely or has a timetable, that's SMART. And there are tons of videos and articles if you're not familiar with SMART, 
just do a little search on SMART and you'll see all sorts of articles and videos, I'm sure, on SMART. So what we want to do if we have a large goal, like let's say writing a book, that we would take that concept of a book and we would break that down into different components like chapters. And then within each chapter, we would break that down into sections, whether it's a fiction or I have a lot of experience writing a nonfiction that we have chapters and then we have sections that are about five pages or so. And then there might be little uh, headings or subheads inside of each section. So I can break up the work, I can outline in detail and do a micro goal on each section. The accumulation of those sections will give us a chapter. The accumulation of all of those chapters will give us a book. So break down larger goals, probably not a real surprise to you here. When I have a lot of things to do, which when do I not? I like to work with prioritization. This is a concept that we see in Scrum projects, where we have a product backlog and it's prioritized from most important down to least important. So we prioritize based on all the things we have to get done. You can't say that everything is most important. There has to be some things that are more important than others. You can really only effectively do one thing at a time. So what are some examples of micro goals? Well, one that I use is uh, get a little book like this. I love little books, little journals, and this is a brand new one, so there's nothing exciting in here but uh, you can get these on Amazon or your local uh, bookstore, I'm sure. Just little journals, little simple little books. And every day I put the date and then I write all of the things I wanna get done for the day or over the next three or four days or this week. Usually every Sunday I write out what I wanna get done this week and then I kind of chunk those out and prioritize those, so Monday being the most important, all the way to Friday. And so I know what my week looks like because this is what I have to get done. So a daily task list. If I'm working with a consultant, then I'm working as a consultant rather, sometimes with other consultants, is we talk about making progress targets. A progress target are like a milestone in a project that when we get all of these things done, then we have some type of a deliverable to show the customer or to show what we've been working on. So we have these intermittent goals to show you're getting a return on our investment, what we're being paid as the consultant for the customer, but we're making progress. You could also work in hourly time blocks, and sometimes this is what I do when I'm recording classes or if I'm writing a book, is that I say between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m., that's usually when I record classes, that it's nice and quiet, not a whole lot going on, thankfully, that that three hour chunk is when I'm going to record or when I'm going to write. So you can time block your day, much like what we see in Agile, where we have time boxes for planning, for the iteration of work, for your daily stand-up or daily scrum, for the sprint demo, for the sprint review, and then back to sprint planning. So we have these time boxes set up. So you can do the same thing in your goals, that you can say, I'm gonna take this hour because I'm, you're busy, you've got your life, you've got your family, you've got your job, but I'm gonna take this hour, whatever hour that is in your day, and that's what I'm gonna work on these micro goals, so I can really see some progress in an hour and give laser-like focus to that thing. So how do we go about implementing micro goals? Well, I already told you my technique there is daily planning. So like I said, usually on Sunday, I write out everything that I wanna get done for the week, and then every day I pick a chunk of that work of what I want to get done for the day. So I can do daily planning rituals. This is a good productivity tip. You can also, another trick that um, I like to do are three by five cards. If I'm working on a big project, that I write all the tasks that I have to get done out on three by five cards or sticky notes and put those on the window and then I can see you know, what I have to get done for the day or what's most important next. We can also do some productivity tools. Of course, there's all sorts of apps. An app that we use here at instructing.com is called Todoist where we 
and all contribute to what needs to be done and then we can track uh, items so nothing gets forgotten that we put it in this app and there are all sorts of apps that you can use i am a big fan though of low tech high touch I don't want people to feel like they can't use the productivity tool because they don't know how to use that software or the software's buggy or what have you. But everybody knows how to uh, write down some three by five cards or write some things in a, a little journal. But use whatever works for you. I think sometimes in project management and in our life, we get a little too caught up in the mechanics of what we're doing and not the reason why we're doing. The focus should be on the work and creating the value. Another approach we can do are accountability systems. Again, there are all sorts of apps. I think there's one called Trends. Uh, I forget what the app is called, but it will, every day it'll tell you like how much time did you spend on your app or you put in the hours you worked on a goal or how did you work for each client. And there are other little gadgets that you can do to help with accountability. Again, I keep it simple. I have an accountability partner. We meet every week and we talk about what are you gonna work on this week? What are your big goals? And then as we go into the next week and we meet again, we have notes on each other and all right, tell me what you did on these items. And so there's a sense of accountability. Having a, a partner to hold you accountable is very good. Of course, we also want to monitor our progress. So there's all sorts of software, again, you can do for this. You can keep it in a notebook and uh, you can cross things out or you can highlight things as you get them done. But there are all sorts of tools in software to track your progress. Really good if you're working towards a big goal. So if you are training for a marathon or you are writing a book, you can plot all of that out in your calendar and mark things as complete. And again, you could do things like Todoist. You could have different projects and then break out those individual tasks and the sum of those tasks equate to the thing that you have completed or working towards. I think it's important regardless of the uh, mechanics that we use, that we take some time and recognize our progress, that we celebrate our achievements. So if you get a bunch of your work done or you hit that uh, progress, that little tracker or a milestone, you know, take yourself out to a nice lunch or a nice dinner or uh, watch a great movie or watch YouTube or whatever the case may be. But take some time to celebrate, to say, hey, I'm proud of myself. I've moved to this point. I'm moving forward. I know you like to keep moving forward and you're working towards the big goal by hitting these intermittent goals, these intermittent milestones. Now, of course, if it were easy, everyone would do it. One of the things that I wrestle with in my life is procrastination. I just get overwhelmed so times. Our companies are growing, we have more employees, there are more things to manage, there are more issues and problems, our audience of people in my classes are growing and growing, so it's more time demands, and sometimes it just gets overwhelming. I mean, I'm very thankful for the opportunity, but I get overwhelmed, so I have to tackle procrastination. I know that if I get overwhelmed, I dread it and procrastinate it, and that's not good for anyone. So procrastination, what I do is I, I have an alarm and I get up at 5 a.m. and I, when that alarm goes off, I hate it because I always seem to be in a great sleep. But 5 a.m. and I go one, two, three and get out of bed. That's it, that's just, you gotta do it. So one, two, three and then get up. And then immediately you get to whatever your morning routine is for me, I make the coffee, get the coffee going, get in the shower, make the bed, have a cup of coffee, gotta play with Roz a little bit, and then I try to get in here and get to work at 6 a.m., six to nine is kind of my protected time. Don't look at my phone, don't look at email, but attack it. Then I get that done first thing in the day, that I get the important stuff done, and then it's kind of a sigh of relief. I have a nice long day of other things and managing things, maybe. Uh, but I've, I've knocked out the important stuff first thing in the morning. So that's my routine to over, overcome procrastination. What's yours? Put a comment down below and what's your tip? I'm always looking for good tips on how to overcome procrastination and I'm sure others are as well. So leave a comment on how you overcome procrastination. The second point here is my number one 
enemy, and that's a distraction. Everybody has their phone with them all the time, and it's so easy, you're in working, and you get a little chirp, or the light flashes up, and you see it in the corner of your eye, or you get those little pop-ups on your computer, which I hate, or your email makes a noise, it's distracting you, it's pulling your focus away from what your priority is right now. So take charge to get rid of distraction. So when I'm in here working, I leave my phone in the other room. I don't wanna see it, I don't wanna hear it, I put it on do not disturb, and I leave it in there so I'm not tempted to take a peek. I shut down email, don't look at email until after nine o'clock on most days and focus on what I have to get done. So I want to remove distractions. Now, sometimes I know you can't do that. You have coworkers, you've got kids, you've got your significant other, and while you love those people, maybe not your coworkers, they can be a distraction to what you're doing. So you need to uh, find a way, find a time with the least amount of distractions or find a place to get away from distraction, but to really focus, you can't be distracted. And then the goal relevance. The idea here is that What's important is what gets done. And I pause because that sounds really mean, but the idea that you know people say, oh, I was so busy, I couldn't get it done, or um, I'm not really interested in doing that, so I don't do it. It lets procrastination come back in. But what's important is what gets done. So for all of your goals that you've crafted out, your micro goals, you need to think about, well, why are these important? Do you have the uh, must do, should do, would like to do, but not right now? That can help you prioritize. That's Moscow. Must have, should have, could have, would like to have, but not right now. Uh, but it's a way to help prioritize your goals. So you want to understand, well, why are these goals important? There's the concept of the pain pleasure principle. So like doing taxes, nobody likes to do taxes. It's a pain. It's never any fun, it's exhausting, but you have the pain pleasure principle. Well, there's not a lot of pleasure in doing your taxes, but there's pain if you don't do your taxes. So we have the pain pleasure principle. Why is that goal important to you? If you don't know, you can think about the pain pleasure principle. So that's a little tip that I do. Um, there are things that I dread doing pain pleasure principle, I wanna avoid that pain, so just get it done. Now, of course, there are no hard rules. I think often we see in project management that you have to do this process. There's like mm, very you know, rigid in our processes and our approach. Well, we want to be adaptable and flexible in our projects, but also in our life. So you have to adapt as needed and adjust your goals as needed. If you get into a goal and you realize, hey, this is, more than a week, it's not really a micro goal, it might be too big. So can you break that down into smaller chunks that could serve as milestones? And if things don't go well, how can you learn from your setbacks? So one of the activities that I do on Sunday, when I'm mapping out my week, I look at last week and what did I not get done? Or sometimes I jot little notes about like this really sucked and <laughs> here's why. So I can learn from that as I go, as I go into tackle it this week. And then we have the concept of embracing change. So we want to embrace change. Everything is about change. Everything's changing. Nothing is constant or very few things are constant. So micro goals we could use in personal development. You think about learning a new skill or learning a new language or a new piece of software. We want to form habits from this. Like I'm just in a habit now of six to nine. It's focus time. In health and wellness, like running a marathon or getting on that diet. Uh, creating some micro goals there. How am I going to eat today or this week? Or I'm gonna get out and walk or go for a jog or whatever the case may be. Of course, in professional development with your career, different certifications you are pursuing, learning a new skill. Obviously in project management, we can do micro goals. I'm a big fan of that in projects that I manage. And then in education. So you're learning something new. Maybe you're a student in college or school and you are working through a class that you may not particularly enjoy, or there are a lot of assignments to do, use micro goals to break that down. Uh, study habits, set a time, do that time boxing of now it's time to study. And of course, for long-term learning objectives, how can you break those down, like the syllabus or 
the number of classes that you have. So micro goals are a great tool that you can use to take a big goal and chunk that down into smaller goals or look at all these little tasks that you have to get done for the week and set goals to work towards those. So that's my approach to getting things done. I like to use micro goals in laser like focus. So try that out. Let me know how it works in your life or as I mentioned, add, add some tips below in the comment for me and for others. I love to see what y'all are doing. I appreciate your time and your attention. If you like the video, be sure to like and subscribe and share this out or come by and see me at instructing.com. I appreciate you. Have a great week. Keep moving forward.